Well, how's it going today? This happens to be a little HP Precision Oscillator at 10 megahertz. <clears throat> you can get these off eBay easy enough. Um, this is a, a 10811, or excuse me, 10811. And these are a pretty nice little piece of equipment. That innocent little box, new, was $800. In the, if you buy just one, the price went down if you bought 25. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to zero beat this against WWV and get it lined up. This has some pretty nice features on it. Uh, it's ovenized, which means it has a it has a heater that stabilizes the oscillator inside. And there's also a temperature control, so it tries to maintain a constant temperature. I'm going to power this off a couple of uh, wet cells today. And normally when you find these, it's just a little tin box. This actually had a little circuit board with it. It got liberated from a, what I believe was a Hewitt Packard uh, frequency counter. I believe it was kind of a uh, a modification or a kind of an update to stabilize the freak counter a little more. This particular one's a little unusual. It has a, a one megahertz output here, even though the counter or even though the oscillator runs at 10 megahertz. And there's a little bit of circuitry on the bottom. There's a couple of power supplies and stuff, so I've taken advantage of that. And I'm just going to use the FRG7 to listen to WWV, and we'll just zero beat this and see how well this becomes stabilized. Uh, we should be able to get well with inside a hertz or two easy. It shouldn't be a big challenge. So we'll turn on WWV here. There we go. We'll kick on the oscillator and let it warm up. You can hear the side tone there. Hear it? And that'll come down as the oscillator warms. Turn that down for now. It'll take about five or ten minutes to come up to temperature. There's a couple interesting little features on this. One of them is that you can actually adjust this, which isn't that surprising. It's no big deal. But another little feature is this control here, which I've added. The, these wires hook up to there. And on the module itself, there's a pin that's actually the what they call the EC. I know E E F C S. Excuse me. Thinking of a couple of different things. Thinking of a couple different things today. Uh, it's electronic frequency control, and basically you use this voltage divider, which is this pot, to muscle the thing around a little bit. It only moves about a hertz or two, so the main tuning is done with this little. There's a little tiny screw deep inside there that you have to reach in and adjust. One of the other features this has that I haven't you know, taken advantage of yet is when the oven comes up to operating temperature and stabilizes, there's a signal that comes out of the thing and lets you know that the thing is in kind of an idle mode. Um, when you first fire up, this eats about half a milliamp of, excuse me, about 500 milliamps. I'm just having a hell of a time today. I've been watching other people's channels too much that have trouble. It runs at about 500 milliamps, but then when it uh, stabilizes, the temperature drops down pretty far. And if you insulate this a little bit more, it'll it'll even help you conserve energy a little bit more. In the instructions, you can find the instructions online for these um, easy enough. It's just a PDF, and if I think about it, I'll put it down below in the description field there, so you can look this up if you want. Um, they tell you not to put it in any place where the ambient air temperature would change or basically in a nutshell keep it away from breezes or fans or anything like that this is a, this is a perfect example of a bad location out here in the open but we're just playing around so there you can hear it's coming down getting close to being with inside the zero beat of the WWV so if we sit and if I shut up listen a little bit you can actually hear it slowing down these the frequency starts out low and raises as these warm up hear it we'll just let that 
go a bit. What I just showed you there is that uh, when that voltage drops from about 24 volts to 3.7 something, uh, then the, for lack of a better word, the oven is in lock and is stabilized. You can hear the, you could hear the oscillator slowly drifting up and the and the beat slowing down. I should be able to get to a point where that rushing sounds um, kind of cycle just about drops to nothing where I hear it r kind of make that rushing sound every minute or so. It's probably almost impossible to completely adjust that to be in line with WWV or at least not to keep it in line for very long. There's always going to be some tiny little bit of drift that you can never chase away, but we could do a pretty good job of it. And then we'll take a look at it and see what uh, what frequency it thinks it's really at. <clears throat> so who cares about precision oscillators? Well, people that do uh, things with cell phones, people that want to measure intervals, people that want to calibrate things. You know, if you have a if you have a uh, frequency counter, you kind of doubt its calibration, this would be an easy way to check it. Actually, this would be an easy way if you have a, uh, like some of the HP frequency counters, you could actually use this to be a reference for your frequency counter, and you wouldn't have to calibrate it. You'd be doing double work. And that's what I have planned for this. I'll put this in a nice little container with some insulation. And like I said, I plan on running it off these wet cells, so I'll have to come up with some sort of a little charger for it. I, the plan is um, to get this in a container, there'll be some little test points. I'll mount this control on the front and have the charging circuit for the battery, like I all mentioned before. Um, there'll be a, a pair of jacks, one for the 10 megahertz, one for the 1 megahertz. And... Probably I'm going to make that out of some pretty heavy aluminum. And I'll have to use some good RF practices to make sure it's good and tight. You don't want uh, 10 megahertz leaking out, squeaking through your house and disturbing other things. One of the other things I'll put on the front panel is I'll probably incorporate the lock light on this to let me know the oven is up to temp. And, I don't know, some other fun things I might, I don't know, 
put my name on it. Who knows? You know, when you're building a project, you can have fun with it. And basically, I'm going to use this as a little precision reference I can drag around in my shop and use with other pieces of equipment. I have a number, number of other pieces of equipment that have the option for a precision reference, but it didn't come with that when I got a hold of them. These really aren't terribly expensive anymore. They're approximately $100. I lucked out and got this one for $50 because the ad said it had rust on it. Um, I don't see the rust, so I don't know. Apparently I didn't look very good. The picture in the ad looked way worse than the product. It came pretty speedily and amazingly enough they packed it well. Let's see how we're doing here. We slowed down to a pretty much a crawl there. And that case is starting to get warm. <clears throat> well, the other things I could do, if I'm really adventurous, is I could take the 10 megahertz or the one megahertz out and for lack of a better word sort of detect it and use uh, filtering and an op amp and pump it back into the thing and use that signal to fiddle with the electronic frequency control and kind of stabilize the thing even more I'm thinking about that but it might be a bit of work for lack of a better word it would be like a phase lock loop And it would give me a reason to put another control on the front of my cabinet. You can never have too many controls. Well, we're getting down there pretty far. We'll let this sit warm up for several hours. And make sure it's good and stabilized before I get too fussy with it. But it sounds like it's pretty close out of the box, which is really great. I might get a hold of one of my frequency counters and just for fun check the thing and see where it's really at. But it's got to be within a hertz or two of 10 megahertz. At the rate you can hear the, 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 the zero beating going there. It's getting pretty close. So I just thought I'd show that to you this morning. And like always... You want to leave a comment that is you're always always very welcome and very appreciated if you have any questions feel free to ask anyway take it easy have a groovy day